Hello and welcome back to Empyrean Galactic Survival Star Salvage. My name is Sponge. Now, I've been searching high and low since the last episode for base CPU extenders because we can't unlock them because we've run out of points. But I'll come to that in a second. Fortunately, I have now found after checking, oh, I don't know, a lot of these little things that look like fuel tanks. These things here, right? I have checked a lot and all of them to the point where I was almost about to give up on these things entirely were capital vessel CPU extenders. But I've got, I don't know, how many have I got? How many have I got? A CPU extenders with cap vessels. Uh, there they are, there's 12. Uh, I did have 16, but I put four of them in my ship. And they're over here, they're in a different box. It's okay, panic over, panic over. Uh, so yeah, I had a bunch of capital vessel ones, but we were obviously looking for the, um, the base ones. And there we go, I found some bloody base ones, guys about damn time so i can at least get tier three i can at least get tier three uh because now with what is in blocks and devices we have a tier two and um, now we have two tier threes which means tier three base so we can probably head back to our space station and actually start building that up ready for settling in um, but i will want some more guns and stuff and a shield array and stuff before i turn that base on Anyway, uh, it's probably best we get out of this sector because this sector has two Tavira class dreadnoughts patrolling it and I don't want to be hanging around to the point where they just start to take uh, take issue with my presence here. Uh, so there's one 16 kilometers away. Fortunately, he is a long, long way away. I don't know where the other one is. Well, there is another one here anyway. Um, so there's also a lot of bases here you got a resupply station a refinery uh the other one's 22 kilometers away sorry yeah shipyard and a res uh, two su resupply stations i should say um i don't think any of those will have tier 4 base extensions in fact i think the only base that has tier 4 base extensions in it is the abandoned assembly yard which of course we've already done now we can go back and find another one and see if we can do that though um let's try a different planet though one we haven't been on that's the lava nascent might be one down there but doing it would be a pain in the bumskis and the snow planet i did check the temperate planet we were on sandy and that didn't have one let's check the snow planet it's a good shout uh, it looks like i'd probably land the capital vessel down there as well there's no restriction by the looks of it on there so let's head that way now the uh the loot i got from the abandoned bunker was lovely it was very nice it was good looting uh lots and lots of fuel out of it as well promethean fuel out of the little block uh the little power boxes and stuff like that so our fuel and o2 box is actually looking reasonably healthy at the moment with 2000 promethean fuels most of what we looted i've organized into various boxes now such as the fuel and input uh fuel and stuff there's loads of these salvage tools which i think are just like, trash random ammo and stuff like that um lots of small arms again a lot of that will just get trashed or chucked in a deconstructor if it deconstructs a few bits and bobs to trade with you know let me do this Make sure I'm not being snuck up upon by a Tavira class dreadnought. They are everywhere around here. It is crazy how busy, how many Taviras um, seem to be around here. Okay, let's, um, yeah, that's okay. Let's head down onto that planet there. And uh, what else? So that was pretty much it. Most of the stuff I put into the input box now is just absorbed in generally in there. But we didn't get anything like I'm not going to rave and dream about. You know, we got a couple of small bridges. I got two large generators, which are lovely, you know. Um, might use them, might sell them. I get a sabotaged Xerox turret out of this. 20,000 CPU and 15 power units of power just to power it. But it has... I guess it's not going to work because it's just sabotaged. Look at the barrel in the front. <laughs> it's looking a little droopy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, all this stuff in here is also loot from that, which, I, which is still waiting to be organized. Okay, so I'll get around to that. Oh, I should probably put the old uh, trumpet greens in the fridge. I don't know what trumpet greens are ever used for. They just they're never anything, I don't think. But there we go. Um, some other bits and bobs and whatnot, as you can see. So that was the abandoned bunker. Good, good up here. I do enjoy a run through the abandoned bunker. But let's see if we can find an abandoned assembly yard. I'm not going to make you sit through it again, but I will. If we can find one, then uh, I will strip it of its tier four extensions the one i did last time some of you asked hey uh, what happened to the extensions from the last one i did well i, I salvaged them i salvaged them into bridges and matrices 
these guys here I salvaged them into that so that I could turn them into any extender I wanted right okay so I can't take a CV down that planet okay well the description is useless useless we will owe it we will level her out and we will watch that Tavira eek 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 14 kilometers away we should be okay to run the SV down onto the planet have a little look around, see if there's see if there's a thing there, and then fly it back if not. Yeah, that looks exactly what I'm looking for right there. With a couple of drones, just for good measure. Ooh. Oh, ho, 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 ho. The gravity a bit heavy on here, or is it me? What is going on? The snow planet. These things never have high gravity. Ah, I don't need any troop transports here. Oh my god, I just want to get in, get the damn extenders and get out. <laughs> Not even interested in the loot all that much, to be honest. Oh boy. Okay, anyway, well, this is going to be an absolute speed run. Uh, I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. No hanging around, no digging about. Just straight up in out shake it all about wham bam thank you ma'am and those troops over there can knob off and i've got time to deal with those guys uh there is a way in i think over here side door yeah side door just basically gets us straight to the point hi this is probably gonna be a really bad idea All, right, all of you come this way, please. Lovely stuff. Okay, thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Oh, hello, Scorpio Bobs. Hello, Scorpio Bobs. Mr. Horror Bob. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Bad times. Well, I guess I thinned some of them out, unfortunately. Oh, I'm gonna miss out on some Xeno steel and alien rockets, look. And some more alien rockets. Uh, some med devices. And some. Oh, I'll take those meds now. That fuel, that would be nice. I need all the space I can get just for uh, the extensions, though. I should imagine I'm still gonna have to make several trips, even with. An empty cargo bay. We got pistol, raw diamonds, and three auto minor cores. I will take those. They can all fit in my bag. Oh, hello, beautiful. <laughs> hello, beautiful. I will take you. And a Unicart minigun as well. These Unicart cartridges are pretty rare. I can't make them. I don't think so, anyway. I haven't even tried. But this is a delightful. Uh, this is a delightful turn of events, this is. Hello, everybody. You all come up to lining up to die. How beautiful. Thank you very much. All right, all the way at the end here. There's still so much stuff out there, still alive. Flip it up, flip it up. Take cover, and then you get ready to clear out the soldiers. Blam, 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 blam. Yes, yes, lots of noise. Blah, blah, blah. And like I said, we're already really interested in one thing. That one thing is not you, sunshine. Sorry. We're going to find this a lot in the case. There's just, 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 just bad guys everywhere. Um, am I in range of the raven? Wow, damn, beautiful. I think we've got enough room for four, but uh, we may need to make several trips, so be it. Deep four extension, please. That's one, and that fills up 1,600. So, yeah, I will need to take two trips, but I can take two at a time. And there we go. That's me full. All right. So, um, let's run that one up. Now I need a quick way out. Uh, let's make our own exit, shall we? I don't really fancy fighting my way through all those enemies that I left behind. Like these guys right here. Like these, exactly these guys. <laughs> Oopsie daisy. There's a vent. 
wonder where that goes. Oops, I think I just lobbed off the thing that can help me get up there. Ah, we have found a way out. Lovely. Right, let's get this stuff up to uh, onto the ship. Offload. Come back and get the other extenders. Well, now that we've got uh, our tier four CPU extenders and our tier three CPU extenders for a base, I've returned back to the old trading station here that we're going to take over. And there's a lot of work ahead to do. Well, first of all, we've got to repair things. Now, a number of you mentioned that there is actually a repair block that we can use that will repair a base. Something that can be attached to the top of a CV and used to repair a base. I'm curious to find out what it is. But that does lead us back to the point I made at the beginning of the video here about me being out of points. I actually spoke to Know It All at DM about this. I was like, is there any other way to get more points? And well, yes and no. If you started on the story, um, a story start, I should say, then yes, you can get points by going through the story dialogue in various POIs. The Fukushima, which we did a little while ago, was one of them. If I went through all the consoles there, I'd get a few upgrade points just by reading the dialogue. In fact, I did actually go back and do that after you guys spoke about it. I just didn't put it in the recording because it didn't really make sense in as far as the episode's um, you know, progression. But uh, rest assured, I did go back to the Fukushima. I did go through all the consoles there and I got as many points as I did. However, there are a few other ships dotted around for various story points in various places that also have uh, some dialogue and you can get upgrade points there. However, if like me, you've begun a non-story start, then not really. That's it. Now, Know It All DM is aware of this and he is working on adding more ways to add uh, more upgrade points. Um, for non-story and story starts alike. Now, as for me, in this situation right now, there is not really anything I can do legitimately to correct the issue. However, there is a wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> fantastic little command uh, that we can perhaps use um, that will give us as many upgrade points as we damn well please. So... With that, I'm going to do that because ultimately I want to show you guys absolutely everything that we can out of this mod. And if that means using the commands to give myself a few unlock points, then so be it. And all it is, all you need to do is do level U plus and then say hmm, 500. And this should give me 500 upgrade points. There you go, which is the same amount that you get every time you hit a milestone in um, the non-story specializations. If you don't go down a specialization, you can give yourself 500 upgrade points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give myself 500. That should keep me going for a little while. Um, and then if we get to a point later on where we need even more, then you know I can I give myself even more if it means we can continue exploring the salvage here. All right, so what the hell do we do with this then? We've got 500 points to enjoy. Uh, well, first of all, I want to get that repair bay that people are talking about, which I think is this one. Can only repair damaged blocks can be upgraded to a repair bay. T2 requires a repair console to work. It's a placeable base, so I don't think it is that one, actually. Um, structural repair emitter, is that what it is? A special repair bay that can be used to repair bases and other capital vessels. Okay, there we go. That's the one we want. Just looking at the uh, items required to build it, and there's nothing out of the ordinary there, so I think we can build it. It is going to cost us a lot of points to get to that, unfortunately, but there we go. Bang, bang, bong. Um, we're going to go, we're going to need a teleporter. Uh, the target pad for an incoming teleport cannot be used to teleport out. Okay, well, I don't really know what circumstance I'd use that in, but uh, go ahead and get. Uh, I want. I want this, and I also want these two as well, because I will be wanting to repair CVs. Now, the base CPU extenders, I'll leave that for now. I think we can get away with not having them, uh, possibly, because we managed to recover the ones that we needed immediately, and that should be fine. Now, everything else in here, again, for our large SV, we're probably going to need to invest in some thrusters here. Although, again, we could, I suppose, go down to a planet or go to junk fields and recover some of the larger jet thrusters. We have found them out in the wild. So um, there is that option as well. And I think that's probably going to be it for the time being, although we will want auto minor devices soon as well. 
because we want to actually set up auto mining networks, don't we? So there's that. And high yield pentaxid growths. Unlock cost is 500 though. So, <laughs> oh, ouch. <laughs> Damn. That is gnarly. No wonder, that's where my upgrade points Well, like 250 for that growing pentaxid, man. That is, that is devastating. Ouchies. Uh, 750 for advanced warp drive, Ecto Reactor 250. I have no idea how you're supposed to get these many points. 750 points, upgrade points, without, like, you know, giving yourself them through the bloody command console. It seems crazy. I can't even imagine you'd get that many through the story dialogue things, but uh, do correct me if I'm wrong, no, or DM. Okay, uh, so what I'm doing over here, or what I've done over here, is build a few turrets here. We want. I built CB ones, didn't I? I'm an idiot. Built bloody CB turrets like an absolute numpty. Um. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any base turrets unlocked. That'll be why. Right. Um, where's the vehicle combat? Does that also include base weapons? Here they are. Here they are. Rocket, laser. Yeah, don't need artillery. Okay. Base shield. We'll definitely need a base shield. And why not go for a base shield modulator as well? Wow, yeah, eating through those points. <laughs> Absolutely eating through those points so fast. All right, so those, there we go. I mean, we've been mostly just like ripping things apart for the components so that we can then do this later. Uh, so we got a bunch of CV turrets I don't need, but actually we're going to need a CV combat CV anyway. So let's uh, let's go ahead and build like five of those, five of those. I don't need any of those. Five of those. There we go. Okay. And we'll get this other guy over here producing ammunition for it. The first thing that we need to do is stock up our ammo repositories and arm the base because the first thing I'm worried about is, of course, um, you know, those those freaking sunnets turning up. Now, I, I, I'm not too worried about a sunnet, but e even, even still, they're going to be a pain in the bum, aren't they? <laughs> They're gonna be a pain in the bum. Let's charge BA 100 output count 120. Let's get like 20. Let's, there we go. Okay, so lasers, rockets, and 15 mil. That's all I'm gonna be using on the base here. So we're gonna get those building here, here, um, and these guys building turrets. And uh, there we go. We are gonna need to now upgrade the base, repair it, and stuff. There's a lot of work to do. There is a lot of work to do. First off, let's have a little, um, let's catalogue what it has and what it doesn't have, I suppose. So it's got O2 tanks, O2 ventilators, stations. It's got fuel tanks, four of them. No generators, though. No generators, no solar panels yet. So we need a bunch of solar panels and capacitors and stuff. Plus normal generators, of course. Um, and then there's like a bunch of NPC spawners still in there. Row lights. There is a gravity generator, so that's good. There is... Uh, five cargo boxes and some personal storage there so we're going to have to try and figure out a way to add in a bunch of 320k su container controllers in this thing as well there's a lot of modifications to do to it to make it work all right but um let's first of all i think get this place repaired the block repaired and stuff like that um i can get rid of the npc spawners things like this need to go we need to dig them out put replace the hangar doors Sensors and things like that will need to be put in place to make these hangar doors actually work then. This area here, I'm thinking, will be a production room would be good. Maybe this store, the wall in here could become storages because we've got this like double layer kind of airlock business that seems unnecessary. And then, because um, I think originally I was like, oh, this area will be our production. We'll put our constructors and stuff here. But I'm thinking actually maybe this area could be... Uh, Pentaxid grow labs and general living and stuff like that because down where the hell is the elevator that goes down <laughs> I'll find my way around this place down below where we were is where the garden is yeah that makes sense so we'll have food production here normal production here and then specialists like pentaxid construction maybe we'll put deconstructors in here oh furnaces no, the, no furnaces will go downstairs that's fine furnaces down there will be okay um, so then we can have like specialist production here because it's nice there's a lot of glass here and then we've got living at the top already with the quarters and stuff already here so we may as well leave that as is okay um and then 
Obviously down, 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 down below. I'm I'm like, there is another elevator down, isn't there? Yeah, there is. I'm staring at it. Then we've got medical here that, that can be moved up to where the living stuff is. And then we got this gravity generator. Um, we can put normal generators in here. Maybe some extra fuel tanks. And then, of course, we've got the fuel uh, core room down below here. So we need to clear this out of the O2 tanks. I don't want exploding stuff in here with the core. Thank you very much. And I'll put the extenders down here as well. We're going to plate armor up these breaches, plate these up. Um, and we'll have our, some nice Xeno armor there or something with, um, with some turrets on it. Keep it nice and safe. And then, yeah, we need to figure out where we're going to put the other guns and this stuff. So we've done lots of guns. I'm thinking like hard points there, there, there. We'll take the thin blocks off. We'll put full blocks on. We'll there, there, uh, there, and on the underside and top side of the hangar bay as well. So a nice three round, round coverage. And we need somewhere to put a shield probably down in that room. Somehow we'll make room. Okie dokie. <laughs> Woohoo! Let's do this. The core room then started out as this explosive powder keg ready to go at any point, and is now this somewhat cramped core room. Now, um, the kind, the core extensions are tucked in behind some armored glass. The walls have been reinforced with xeno steel. Lighting has changed. We've got a Wi-Fi down at the bottom here, but that behind that wall is all the tier four stuff. All the oxygen tanks and fuel tanks have been stripped out, and this is all just core stuff now. The generator and gravity room up above the core level was this absolutely mess of a room, but is now a fully functioning generator room complete with power generators and extreme heat. And as you can see, the shield generator and a mezzanine level above. What used to be the med bay has started out as this dark foreboding room full of weird medical devices, but is now an engineering bay, complete with a shield generator we saw before, fuel tanks, and solar panel capacitors, as you can see, as well as the pentaxid tank at the end there. A very, very different room than what it was. And above that, the very sorry looking garden has been transformed from this damaged mess into a much nicer and working garden area. Well, I've toned down the decoration, I've added some extra piping, and they've restored the grow lights. There's also a fully uh, maxed out cold storage over here, as well as our regular fridge. At the, uh, the food processor is where it was when it started. And the small hangar bay uh, that started out as this damaged, half-working, completely decompressed room of uselessness has now been transformed into our production room complete with four advanced constructors and a furnace and four 320 KSU containers embedded in the walls. The walls have also been reinforced with Xeno steel at the back there and a lot of the corridors and stuff behind these panels have been stripped away. And the main hangar bay uh, which started out life as this empty dull looking hangar bay is now well Pretty much the same, actually. It's a hangar bay. It was functional. I didn't spend too much time on this. A little retexturing work. Uh, I've also embedded some more container controllers in the walls. We've got an ammo container there. Another 320 KSU. Some smaller containers up there. We've gotten rid of the corridors that were embedded here. And I've done, like I say, a little bit of retexturing work. Plus a repair bay down here, which I may move onto the roof, actually. Bit of oxygen storage in the ceiling there as well. Then there's the trade floor, which started out as empty, derelict, and well, with no traders and stuff, is now restored. And where we're probably going to be working from in terms of armor, repairs, O2, there's some nice living and deco things here, but also our med bay, fully equipped med bay here as well, complete with shower and toilet facilities. The big windows there uh, replace the light smaller ones out there and give us a lovely view of the sun but uh yeah some of the texture work is okay some of it i was limited to because of the upstairs grow plots we got some hanging lights and stuff like that but mostly it's as it was originally apart from obviously 
airing out the internal walls. And then just upstairs here, I don't know if this is going to work, but this is where I plan to grow Pentaxid on this top level here above there. It might not work because it's, I don't know how radioactive the Pentaxid is. If it's very radioactive, then um, this room is probably not suitable and we'll have to swap it with the other one. Um, but this is the plan and, and uh, we're going to try it. And finally, the rooms at the top of the station, which started out as damaged and boring, are now, well, again, mostly the same. I've not changed too much in here. The, the likelihood is I'm not going to spend much time up here anyway. But I've done a little bit of redecorating, new furniture, um, but that's about it. It is pretty much the same, both this one and the one above. A little bit of like carpet work and stuff, as you can see. That's it. I don't imagine I'm going to be coming up here very much at all. So I didn't put much work into it. And of course, let's not forget the outside of the base as well has gone from this. Do this. As you can see, I've slapped on some solar panels and some turrets. Also, the turret places along here, a lot of them are Xeno steel and reinforce the outer hull. That wall there is where the furnace is. And these two turrets here is where the core room was, just to give you some idea of where everything is. But we've got a mix of laser, missile, and gat turrets all over this thing. The only place I don't have any just yet are on the bottom of the hangar here. This is very much still a work in progress down here. It was originally going to put a huge solar array down there, but uh, I think it might have gone down a little bit too far and, and maybe looked a bit funny. So I stopped it there and we've utilized other parts of the base to slap these solar panels onto. Again, somewhat haphazardly, again, still kind of work in progress. But that's it. There we go. The base is operational. It is with 100% shields. It is armed. So if something does come along and want to have a go, well, it's as good a place right now as it's ever been. So hopefully we'll be able to either drive it away or kill it. In any case, with the CV there, um, we stand a pretty good chance of that between the two shields of this base and the CV. Uh, and there we go, ladies and gents, my new base. Up and running. Now we have a place to dump stuff. Now we have a place to empty cargo. Now we have a place to forge ingots, deconstruct, and come back to with our ill-gotten gains. Right, so the last thing I need to do is actually um, repair the base. So I've got this structural repair block here. I haven't actually got a repair block already in here, have I? No. Okay, I just need to turn the shields off then. We're going to slap this on the top of the ship. Right, basically where that little deco block is there. That's perfect. There we go. Slap that on top of the ship there. Beautiful. And then we'll slap this repair console down here. Beautiful. Okay, now then. Let's drive the ship under the base. All right, I think we can turn our shields back on as well. Oh, now we're getting a little low on the old fuel side of things. Let's top you up a little bit. Yeah, the amount of time I've spent here has meant that the majority of my fuel is now out of. Turn the ship around a little bit. I need to get it so that uh, the rear block there lines up nicely with the part of the base. And it's in range. These things are so fiddly. Why are the shields not coming back on? Hello? Um, these things are so fiddly, you have to get them perfectly in line, but not too in line and not not, not in line enough, you know? <laughs> there we go, hopefully that'll be that'll be fine. Uh, the only way to tell really is to go back and check out the console here. So, so repair blocks. Does this work? We have a base. We have 103 iron ingots required. Well, that's quite good. I think we can manage that. 103 iron ingots. Yeah. Oh, bingo. <laughs> intended. Totally intended. I mathed that to the absolute nth degree. Pop it in there. And wait for it to figure its life out. Start repair. Oh, look at that. Do you know what? I've never seen a base with a green force field around it before. That is interesting. It's cutting into my ship like crazy. But there we go. The base is being repaired. Lovely. My next task will be to put the finishing touches on that, find somewhere to put the deconstructor in there because I completely forgot about that, and uh, get it ready for habitation. There's a few other things like adding a few extra oxygen stations around the place that I want to do as well. 
because there's only one and it's on the the uh, the habitat level at the moment so there we are uh ladies and gents i know this is a much much shorter than normal episode but the amount of time it has taken me to retrofit this base and get it into a format that is digestible and easy to uh view for you has taken up all the time i have in order to record and produce this episode so i'm afraid that is all the time we have for today uh still i think uh, a solid bit of progress despite the short episode we have a base and that is a big news uh start site base Fully armed and operational. Next up, we've got an entire Xerax sector here to clear and uh, reduce to rubble. <laughs> Plus, also, we need to set up an auto mine network and start really dredging in the resources. Uh, we need a combat CV. We need a cargo lift SV. We still have a lot of work to do, but hopefully uh, you will join me for all of it. But thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.